Good afternoon, Dr. Jäger and Mr. Klotz. It's a pleasure to have you on our expert interview of the Long COVID Affairs community. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, Thank let you. us start. Let us uh, start right at the beginning. How did it all happen, Dr. Jäger? How did you find out that hepapheresis is a treatment that people with long COVID, post vac syndrome, and other chronic illnesses could benefit from? Well, uh, this came about when I saw the first, um, after seeing the first terrible pictures from Wuhan, that there were some publications from pathologists showing that um, COVID infection goes along with a systemic inflammation of the vessels called endotheliitis. And as I use health apheresis for the treatment of vessel diseases for decades, uh, I had the idea that it should be uh, tried to apply the health apheresis also for COVID victims. And uh, then there were some hindrings. I tried to publish this idea uh, and I did publish it in the German Erzblatt, but I had no resonance. And then there was another obstacle that in my um, treatment lane were uh, hope mostly uh, high risk cardiac patients, and I could not invite into this clinic um, acute COVID patients. So I had no, no, no chance to, to uh, treat them very early. And then I started treating them um, in, in February 21, when I saw, saw the first long COVID victims in my clinic. Okay. Okay, another question to Mr. Klotz. Uh, you have been a long COVID patient yourself and you're now an expert patient who's directing an own combination therapy and help a pharisis clinic in Cyprus. Can you tell us a little about your journey in, as, as a patient and your involvement? So, uh, am I an expert patient? Uh, no, I just, I just have to know what the doctors in the clinics and the medical staff do. So, I'm a patient relationship manager. But um, the involvement in the history was actually quite easy. Dr. Jäger treated me as patient number 18 in her study. And after um, I started the clinic in Cyprus using exactly the same protocols and working together, because uh, it just worked so well for me that we definitely understood we, we need more clinics like that. Unfortunately, we haven't seen any new clinics since because there's limited availability of machines, etc. No, there are some new clinics uh, on board. Uh, that have machines already. Yes, yes, that's true. Uh, and they started also to treat COVID patients. But nonetheless, you are right that uh, uh, it's a big bottleneck mm. in the world. There are not enough machines for all the... Uh, millions of long COVID or post vaccine sufferers we have. And so uh, mm -hmm. that's the reason why we talk here with you. Uh, uh, it's a very effective treatment and it's, of course, a costly treatment. But together with anti clotting medication I use in uh, my clinic since uh, the early beginning we can definitely help patients together with other medical treatments for POD symptoms, PAN symptoms, and myocarditis or whatsoever, but uh, it's extremely helpful. People always think that Dr. Jäger and, and me and others who are in this field, we always uh, are about health operations only, but actually we're doing the opposite. We're trying to find as many other treatments as possible because we want to do something for the masses, we want to make it financeable, etc. So what was my other involvement? Well, after the treatment, um, I, I was just a little bit here and there, you know. First, I, I wanted to help the patients, then I did the clinic. Um, then I met great people like Harry Leeming, Chess Medina, Asad Khan, and, uh, and first of all, Dr. Yeager, of course. And, and you know, the long COVID community in the beginning was very small. It was a few thousand of us. Now it's millions. Okay. So, yeah, as a, as a former patient, this has been... Uh, we just said it before, it has been an extremely busy year. So many things have happened. Okay. Yeah, they were all being patients at my 
limit the aforementioned and um, uh, but um, and they all tried to help to to make the problem visible and I think one of the big issues that has to be overcome is the still happening stigmatization of this kind of patients mm. being uh, forced in the totally wrong direction of psychosomatic disease categories only. I will not deny that chronic infection following COVID has a psychosomatic components but it's a consequence and not the reason for the disease and this is in many discussions not clear and this has many financial implications because if you say it's just something in your head which cannot be um, uh, cannot be confirmed by by medical examinations, then uh, the responsibility is handed over back to the patient. And this is a development which I really consider very dangerous and very inhuman. Mm -hmm. Okay. So another question, Dr. Jäger. Many, sometimes even self-proclaimed science journalists have published articles about uh, help aphoresis for the treatment of long COVID. But so far only the Neue Zürcher Zeitung and a few others have understood exactly which machine is used for the help aphoresis and that the removal of cholesterol is only one of the many effects of it. Why do you think it's so difficult for journalists to understand the many pleiotropic effects and pathways of help aphoresis? <laughs> well, I don't want to blame the journalists. I think this method is uh, uh, generally not enough recognized in medical science. And uh, that is maybe part of the reason that it is reserved only for high risk patients. So it's not a mass treatment, has never been a mass treatment. And for journalists, it is not so easy to go into the biochemical details. Mm. And it seems also not to be so easy for some of the German doctor societies, like the uh, German Society of Nephrology and others who just uh, make statements without uh, going into the depths of the problem. But, you know, we have published the ideas in, in very renowned journals and everybody who wants to know more about can ask us, can visit us, mm -hmm. can read about it. But, uh, you know, um, and other, other people who state wrong things can only blame themselves. It's not in my responsibility. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. Thanks. Mr. Klotz, as a former patient, what would you do if you were a patient looking for a treatment right now that needs guidance? Well, first of all, do your own research. I know that doctors probably won't agree with me that doing your own research is great, but it's important that you know about your illness and that you understand that you have long COVID. Because mm -hmm. so many people, they just think that they're aging or that they're slowly recovering. It's, it's hard to understand in the beginning that they have long COVID. Once you've done your research, look, if you, if you can afford, if you have the funds for a good treatment, then do it early. Don't wait long. Mm -hmm. Find yourself a good telemedical provider if you can't travel. If you can travel, there is now almost 20 clinics internationally that really help you with long COVID. So, of course, my recommendation will be to go down the route of alphapheresis and combination treatment because it's been working for me, my mother, my auntie. Hundreds of our patients, hundreds of Dr. Jaeger's patients. But no matter what you decide, do it as early as possible. Don't mm -hmm. wait. And things that you can do at home is hydrate, drink electrolytes, watch okay. what you eat, clean eating, uh, and really be focused on, on recovering. And, and always be aware that it's not only you who suffers from the illness, it's also the loved ones around you. Because it's such a cruel, invisible illness. And the illness does a lot of things to you. And, and you're not going to be the same person during your illness than you were before. You're going to have 
but your temper is going to be different. Uh, you're going to very often be depressed. You're going to have anxiety. You know, that is biochemical. So we understand very well how that works. Mm -hmm. But people outside, they will not understand because even for many doctors, it is hard to understand this because it's so new. Okay. Yes, I think that's an important point. Uh, uh, one of uh, the key trigger of this disease is <clears throat> ox lack of oxygen lack of oxygen in the microcirculation mm -hmm. and the brain unfortunately is the organ with, where most of the micro vessels are located so it changes a lot and and it makes it difficult for people to uh, to react properly and there is of course no concentrated political will to accept it and to move forward, otherwise I would not uh, be sitting here with you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and Dr. Jäger, from your clinical experience, uh, you have started to add several forms of therapy to help aphoresis. Do you think um, the combination therapy in long COVID and chronic illness will become the gold standard, just as it is uh, in the area of cancer and HIV? Yes, I'm not, I cannot look into the future, of course. I can uh, say in the moment, it's the health apheresis is the best working treatment um, worldwide. I'm aware of, and many reports have stated this, and many patients have confirmed this. Mm -hmm. But um, um, there, I hope for new developments that might be even better and more appropriate. and. Uh, I think um, there's a very good chance to implement this treatment also for other forms of septic treatments also. And I thank you, my yeah. mm -hmm. Well, against the POTS, for instance, I would radin can be very helpful to reduce the pulse rate and the agitation of the patient and it lowers the heart frequency and it is in the hands of a, uh, of a Quip doctor, easy to prescribe, as well as just aspirin and clopidogrel are very helpful to to counteract the plate, chronic platelet activation and other anticoagulants like afixaban, dabigatran, and others are, and especially to my point of view, heparin is very helpful to destroy this. Um, structures, uh, microclots and microclots in the circulation of the patient and to reduce also thereby the endothelial damage that hinders oxygen exchange in the microcirculation and the microcirculation. So it's important to treat the people as early as possible and uh, to, to, um, to avoid chronification. And what we also see the same, it's, it's quite interesting. Mm -hmm. We really see the same things. We work together all the time, but sometimes we discover independently the same thing at the same time. Like, for example, hyperbaric oxygen only after half of this really gives results. And, and there was some others, like cryotherapy seems to help no matter when you apply. Yes, it, it, uh, it, but the patient must be able to apply it, must be, of course. if he's too weak, uh, he has to wait. But there's a lot of uh, ongoing uh, learning and, and we are happy to, uh, to, uh, to work together. So it's wonderful. So Mr. Klotz, uh, is there anything you can tell us about Dr. Beate Jäger that the world should know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The lots, <laughs> the, the list is endless. Listen, she saved my life. I have a second chance at life. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for here, I probably wouldn't be here or I would be chronically disabled for the rest of my life. She's incredibly generous. She's a pure humanist. Uh, she's one of the three most clever people I've ever met in my life. Mm -hmm. And I've met lots of clever people in my childhood. Um, well, and, and you know, I think... What she gives to the world, she was one of the first ones listening to us long COVID sufferers. So what she does for many is just so incredible. She gives back lives. That's, that's a, 
that's an incredible thing in itself, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay, and similar question to Dr. Jaeger. Is there anything you can tell us about Markus Klotz that the world should know? Of course. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, Markus is not only an exceptional, charming patient, he is a person who takes the initiative and decided to give up his, his life after going through this terrible infection and decided to build up a new clinic apart from his completely apart and away from his background. And he spent so much effort to, to get the new place of his dream running. This is uh, incredible and most remarkable. And he is not also only very clever and humanistically oriented, but uh, the wonderful news is, sorry, I'm getting a call from America. Okay. Uh, with me. Jäger? Okay, I heard so. I'm sorry, <clears throat> we were interrupted. And no. you know, it's to take the energy to build up a new clinic. And I know from other of my former patients who did the same and were uh, move, moving into the direction uh, to be pragmatic and try to solve the problems really. And that that what that is what I uh, appreciate very much and what I uh, what what needs to be done. And I think uh, it's a time race, and uh, we we should try to make this applicable to to most people possible ever. And I've seen children going out of their wheelchairs who even did not need um, help apheresis, but just need a combined anti-clotting treatment mm -hmm. consisting of a platelet inhibitor and a, and a NOAC, DOAC, Dabigatran or Apixaban or whatsoever, or heparin. And, and so this is um, the way we have to concentrate on. Okay. Yeah. okay. So another question to both. Uh, is there anything important that we have not touched on in our interview that you feel should be brought to the attention of our long COVID community? Yes. One thing I really uh, think deserves much more intense research is the possible viral persistence and uh, to underscore and un investigate more in detail uh, the vaccine associated damages leading to viral persistence in the various organs. And we haven't solved the issue how to get the, vi the virus and the spike proteins out of the cells into the circulation or into the guts or wherever. Uh, uh, we can really end end up with this problem. That's that's extremely important. I personally think. Mm -hmm. okay. For me, I think the Lancome community should should know a, a few other things like where to find help. You know, um, who to turn to, and uh, we're, we're going to meet a doctor later on who's going to start uh, networks all doctors. Uh, how long COVID patients can get information easier, which things help at home, which doctors to turn, which can adapt, of course, in the future. But uh, as soon as we, we know, we'll definitely make it available to the community. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, and it has to be uh, has to be transferred also to the to the level of the general practitioners because the few specialists working on apheresis or working on clotting metabolisms will not be sufficient to meet the needs of, of the large community of, of people which are generally see by, seen by their family doctors. So there must be a knowledge transfer um, to a broader level. I think that is also very important. Okay. And to end up with the stigmatization and and some people, uh, what you were asking about the journalists before, mm -hmm. I think also journalists have a high responsibility and some were doing this brilliantly to, to uh, which is very 
typical for this pandemic that we that we see in the media, whatever kind of social media or official media, we see discussions at an ideologized level and they are not fact confirmed. And this is this is a major backstep in my personal opinion. And I okay. think uh, 30 years ago, people would have handled this problem m more accurately than nowadays. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so I think that's why the work that everyone's doing in our group of clinics mm -hmm. is so important. Yeah. yeah, and I would like to thank your long COVID uh, uh, community and you, uh, Tom, especially for, because it's a, a lot of work uh, and and I I really appreciate these efforts, and we just have to uh, keep in touch. And whoever has a good idea should share it. That's I think that's the spirit. And I had a wonderful um, meeting uh, yesterday evening, evening with an um, um, Afghan Af uh, Afghanian taxi driver who brought me from the airport to the clinic. And he said, people who have a small head think that the world is so big. Mm -hmm. But people with a big head think the world is little and vulnerable and that people should think and communicate together. And I think this is a wonderful thought. Mm -hmm. Okay. All the best. Bye-bye. Bye, Thomas. Bye, Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to have you on. And may I thank you both in the name of our community for everything you do for all of us. Thank you very much and all the best for you. Thank Same you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.